Ah, Missouri, known for its vast farmland, the giant arch, terrible weather, and of course, its world-famous barbecue, Missouri has a lot to offer. Five pro sports teams, the home of Budweiser and the Lake of the Ozarks, and while most of the Show Me State is great, just like every other state, Missouri has its least desirable spots, the places you don't want to live. So in order to measure the worst places in Missouri, we got to use data and opinion. In terms of data, it's going to be the places where crime is bad, people are poor, the schools are bad, and where it's just straight ghetto. And in terms of opinion, well, I've been to a lot of places in Missouri, and you Missouri people, though, you've been sending me emails and commenting on other videos telling me the bad places where you live and telling me where I should be talking about. So we're going to use those opinions as well. Well, Walt Disney might be from Missouri. There's certainly nothing magical about the places we're going to talk about. And here, here we go. We begin our tour of the worst places to live in Missouri with a stop in Poplar Bluff, located down on Route 60 in the Ozark region of the state down here in Butler County. Poplar Bluff is home to 17,000 people, and despite its beautiful location, life here is tough. About 33% of residents, that's one in three, they're living in poverty, and the unemployment rate's 10%. But that's not fully to blame here, it's the wages. People living here are making a median income of just $30,000. It's no wonder why home values are the second worst in the state here in Poplar Bluff. And then there's the crime. It's a small area, far from the big cities, but crime in Poplar Bluff is the ninth highest in the state. Most of it's property crime. Folks living here have a 1 in 15 chance of having their stuff stolen or burned every year. There's some arsonists here in Poplar Bluff. That's 223% higher than the national average. What is going on here? Residents complain there's nothing fun to do here. There's run-down homes everywhere, and meth junkies wander the streets at all hours. Can you imagine? But if you're into art, check out the Flying F Gallery, and try not to give a flying F if your car windows are smashed while you're in there. We travel about three hours west to Laclede County to find number nine, Lebanon, located in the scenic Ozarks of South Central Missouri. There's 15,000 people here. If you drive through the city on I-44, you're going to notice the highways lined with boats. That's because Lebanon's become the aluminum boat building capital of the world. Good for you guys. Pretty cool. And pretty bad for the 20% of adults here who never graduated high school. There's plenty of manufacturing jobs to go around, but very few people living here make more than 37 k a year. A lot of people just aren't working. And as a result, 15% of people live below the poverty line. Property crime's a growing problem in Lebanon, too. If you live here for a year, you have a 1 in 21 chance of being robbed. And the city has one of the highest rates of car theft in the nation, too. So don't forget to lock your doors. Just like in Poplar Bluff, meth isn't hard to find here. People living here complain about junkies roaming the streets, fights breaking out at the local Walmart, and there's just not a lot to do. Unless you count trout fishing and happy hour at Applebee's. At number 8... Berkeley! It's a St. Louis suburb right next to Ferguson. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it if you live in the St. Louis area. There's 9,000 people who live here, about 20 minutes from downtown. Like other cities on this list, this place is struggling economically. Jobs are hard to find in Berkeley. The unemployment rate sits at 12%, and if you're able to find work, the wages are low, with a median income of just 33 grand. As a result, 18% of residents are living below the poverty line. Education and housing are also concerns here. And while Berkeley may look peaceful with plenty of parks, we would not recommend exploring them alone or after dark. That's because the city averages just under two violent crimes per week and more than one property crime each day. There's only 9,000 people living here. In one year, 101 cars were broken into, so don't forget to lock up and hide anything valuable. There are some benefits to life in Berkeley. Lambert's really close by. People are just five minutes away from getting the heck out of this town and throwing rolls across the restaurant. At number seven on our list, Aurora. It's down in the southwestern part of the state in Lawrence County. There's like 7,000 people here. In the 19th century, the area was booming thanks to the mining industry, but today this little sleepy town has a number of problems. Let's begin with the poor economy. You'll have trouble finding a good paying job in Aurora. One in 10 people doesn't have a job or won't get one. People make about 40K a year and 12% of people are living below the poverty line. The school system's just about as lousy as the job market, with some of the lowest funding levels in the state, and it shows one in five folks here never finished high school. Aurora has other issues as well. The crime rate's 120% above the U.S. norm, 
With residents standing a 1 in 21 chance of being the victim of a property crime, every year they call Aurora home. In addition, the area struggles with housing and diversity. So what are the perks of living in Aurora? Well, they have both a Walmart and a price cutter. Sweet! And apparently they still have a drive-in theater in town. Those are actually hard to find these days and very underappreciated. Good for you, Aurora. Down in Pemiscot County is number six on our list, Carruthersville. It's along the Mississippi across the water from Tennessee. There's 5,600 people here. It's at an intersection of sorts. I-155 and I-55 both run through town. And it's easy to get to Memphis and the ghetto parts of Illinois from here. So that's one reason there's so much crime and drug use here. Carruthersville has a big safety problem with the crime rate much higher than the national average. In fact, this place had the highest burglary rate in Missouri last year, Little Carruthersville. It also had the state's fifth highest violent crime rate per capita with about one aggravated assault per week on average. Can you believe that here in Little Carruthersville? Sadly, the people here are struggling to make ends meet. The median income here is just barely above 31K and one in 10 people can't find a job or aren't trying and one in four residents is on food stamps. Coincidentally, one in four residents here never finished high school either. So as you can imagine, folks here are dealing with a terrible school system. It's so bad here, even Walmart closed up and left shop in 2017. If Walmart leaves, your town must have some real problems. I mean, come on, people. But who needs a job when you can just try your luck at the casino? It's a sure bet, right? I'm sure a lot of people here shouldn't be spending their money here at the Carrollsville Casino, but they do, and it's sad, and it's a shame. At number five, the live entertainment capital of the world, Branson, Missouri. It's in Taney County, about a half hour south of Springfield in the heart of the Ozark Mountains. 12,000 people live here, but Branson is just about a 100% tourist town, which brings with it some positives and a whole lot of negatives. What's not to love? Well, people living here say the traffic's terrible, the cost of living's through the roof, and the taxes are high, and the town shuts down when it's not peak season. Now, the unemployment rate's under 4%, which is great, but apparently it's hard to find a job that's not seasonal. So for most of the year, 17% of people are on welfare, more than half the school kids are considered economically disadvantaged, and just 37% of high school kids are good at math. Come on, Branson. That's why China's beating us. Like other cities on this list, crime and drugs are also a big problem in Branson. Of course, it's a tourist town, so crime's going to be high. But as it stands, Branson has the highest property crime rate in the state, even though it's a tourist town, and it's four times higher than the national average. So watch your wallet when you're at the show or in line at Silver Dollar City, or you could join the long list of people who were robbed here last year. Overall, Branson makes a great vacation, just not a place you want to call home. At number four on our list, Sullivan. It's right on I-44, southwest of St. Louis, down in Franklin County. It's home to about 7,000 people. Just like all other places on this list, this place is struggling economically. The unemployment rate is not to blame here. You can find jobs here. The problem is they're bad paying jobs. People here make about 35K a year, so one in five people's getting food stamps. Sullivan's crime rate is more than double the U.S. average, where people have a 1 in 22 chance of being the victim of a property crime. On top of that, there's just not much to do in Sullivan. People living here complain that drugs are a growing problem, public transportation doesn't exist, and there's no diversity. And apparently, people here don't talk to one another. At least that's what they tell one another online. But if you live there, you do have great access to outdoor activities like Merrimack State Park, so good for you. Of course, we knew Springfield was going to be on this list. You might be surprised it's not higher on this list. This place is a wreck, mister. It's the third largest city in the state down here in Greene County. In Springfield, one in five people are on welfare. What is going on? My God. But that's not even the real reason it's a terrible place. Of course, Springfield is the most dangerous place in Missouri. Even more dangerous than St. Louis, if you can believe that. When you measure both murders and robberies combined, per capita, Springfield's worse. Car thefts, burglaries, drug use, you name it, Springfield's got it. Springfield also had the highest rate of rape cases in the state too, averaging about one rape a day last year. What the hell? Springfield residents have a 1 in 12 chance of being the victim of a robbery. That's pretty much everybody on every block every year here. And if that wasn't enough, you guys told me there's no diversity or culture in Springfield. Women are treated poorly, traffic's a nightmare, homeless people are everywhere, and the sidewalks are littered with needles. But Bass Pro Shops is headquartered here, so at least there's something for you outdoorsy types down there. 
So which city is actually worse than Springfield? It might be a surprise, or not, to learn it's little Charleston, way down here in the far southeast corner of the state in Mississippi County. There's only 6,000 people here. Charleston's a little teeny country town where everybody knows each other and there's not too much going on aside from the Dogwood Azalea Festival each spring. So how did it end up on this list? Well, Charleston's very poor. It has the highest unemployment rate in the state where 15% of people are out of work. It also has the second lowest household incomes where people make under 30000 a year for the whole house. And that's why home prices are the sixth lowest in the state too. Basically, a bunch of people down there don't work haven't worked for a decade, they get welfare and use drugs. Crime is bad, but not bad bad, so at least there's that. And all that trickles down to the schools. The kids here in Charleston attend some of the lowest funded schools in the country. The national average per kid is about 14,000 a year. In Charleston, it's half that, and it shows one in five kids drops out before their senior year here. But they must be doing something right, because Charleston High School has won 11 State Boys Basketball Championships. Go Blue Jays! And the worst place to live in Missouri is, of course, St. Louis. It's like one of the worst places to live in the country. Come on now. Crime here is through the roof, but you knew that. It's one of the most violent cities in the country, and it's getting worse, and you knew that too. Get this, last year in St. Louis, there were more than 5,700 rapes, murders, robberies, and assaults in one year. There's a murder almost every other day here in St. Louis. And if you manage to survive here, your stuff surely won't. Nearly 3,000 people had their cars stolen in the city last year. That's just a fraction of the 18,500 property crimes committed last year, too. There's huge parts of this city where people are broke and on welfare, and they just wander around all afternoon and evening looking for trouble. It's known as a city that's segregated. It's very dirty and uninspiring in many areas. No wonder the problem has shrunk by 3.5% in the last five years. There's parts of St. Louis that are okay, like downtown isn't so bad, even at night. And they always seem to be fixing things up near downtown, so that's cool, at least they're trying. But those suburbs are bad. If you live in St. Louis, you know how bad it is. If you're thinking about moving to Missouri, it's okay to move to places really close to St. Louis. Just don't live in the pockets on the north, south, or east sides of town, because those are straight ghetto BS. Instead, move to places on the western fringes of downtown St. Louis and places like Ladue if you can afford them. There's also some really nice burbs in the Kansas City metro area like Lee Summit. These are basically places where it's safe, where there's a lot of jobs, where the schools are decent, and there's things to do. Is that too much to ask for in Missouri? A safe, easygoing, nice life? I mean, come on, it's a great state. They just need to do some soul searching and act like adults in a lot of these areas. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better. Because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. If you need help figuring out where to move, email me. I can do a phone consultation with you and help you figure out what city and state's best for you and your family. I do it all the time.